Hello everybody, I am Chayan Vinayak Goswami. In this chapter, we will learn about bidirectional reflectance distribution function, also known as BRDF. Before we start understanding BRDF, let's take a look at what is physically based rendering. Physically based rendering is a technique that attempts to achieve photorealism by simulating the behavior of light as it works in reality. And physically based rendering models describe reflection using BRDF. So now let's understand what is BRDF. Bidirectional reflectance distribution function. If we try to understand BRDF in simplistic terms or in layman's language, BRDF is a function that describes how much light will be reflected from a certain material when light arrives or falls on it. And this function is BRDF function. It can also be defined as a ratio of the quantity of light reflected in a direction to the quantity of light arrived from a direction. For our shader, this direction will be the direction of eye or the camera and the quantity of light arrived from a direction, this direction for our shader will be the direction of light from the point because that's where the light is coming from in the scene. It can also be described as a ratio of radiance to irradiance. And in one of the previous chapters, we have understood the terms radiance and irradiance. So now we have gathered an idea of what is BRDF. Now let's understand BRDF in detail. In reality, when light comes onto the surface, it comes from different directions. But to calculate BRDF correctly, we must have a direction of light arriving at the surface. So it is more appropriate to take or consider a point of the surface for this calculation. So if we take a section and a point of the surface, and if we calculate the direction of the light from this point, and this will be the direction of light for our BRDF function. And this is a point. So this can be a consideration for calculating reflectance using BRDF function. But as we know that BRDF is a ratio of radiance and irradiance. And radiance or the light reflected is measured as energy reflected per unit area. And the unit of radiance is watt per meter square. So it is more accurate to take or consider a small section of the surface instead of a point. If this is a section of the sphere and if we take a small section from this surface, this is a very small section and the direction of light coming onto this section will be the direction for our BRDF function. And we will call this section differential solid angle. So now we have introduced a new term differential solid angle. So let's understand what is solid angle and differential solid angle will be a patch or a section of the solid angle. If we have a sphere of one unit radius or radius of one unit length. So this is the center of the sphere. And if we cut a pyramidal section that goes up to the center of the sphere. And the area of the section is one unit square, which is the radius square is called as solid angle. This can be any shape, but the area should be one unit square. It can be a circular shape, it can be a pyramidal shape, it can be any other shape, but the area should be one unit square. 
and this is called as solid angle. And the unit of solid angle is ter radian, and this solid angle will be one ter radian. And differential solid angle is the patch or a section of the solid angle, and that is what we are considering for our BRDF calculation. So now we know the area of the surface on which we will work to calculate the reflectance using the BRDF function. So the definition of BRDF we defined is the ratio of quantity of light reflected to the quantity of light arrived. So first let's work on the part of quantity of light arrived and the light will be arriving from an emitting source. In the chapter of radiance and irradiance, we understood that light carries energy particles called photons. And the energy or quantity of light arriving at surface is proportional to the photons arriving on the surface. That means if this is a point on the surface and Li light incidence, this is the quantity of light arriving at a point. We are representing the quantity of light arriving at a point by Li. So if Li photons are arriving at point on surface, then on a differential solid angle with certain width and certain height, Li multiplied by width and height. So this will be the quantity of light arriving on this area. That means Li multiplied by area. And as this area will grow, the quantity or the number of photons arriving on the surface will grow as well. Now, if we have a beam of light falling on the surface, then the number of photons arriving on the surface will also depend on the angle between the light source and the surface. And why is that? Let's understand. So for example, this is the beam of the light and this is our area that we are considering. And these are the photons traveling in the beam. If the surface direction and the direction of light are same, then all of these photons will hit the surface. And now the light is coming from this slanted direction. And these are the photons that are traveling in the beam and in this case some of the photons will miss hitting the surface that means less photons will be arriving onto the surface and in this case this is the normal of the surface and this is the direction of light and if the light beam is perpendicular to the surface in that case all the photons will miss hitting the surface. So no photons will hit the surface. And in this case, this is the normal direction and this is the light direction. That brings us to the Lambertian diffuse law. N dot L is 1 where the theta is 0. And here N dot L is 0 where the theta is 90 degree. That means the quantity or the number of photons arriving at the surface will also depend on n dot L. That means the cos theta. The theta is the angle between the light and the surface. That gives us the quantity of light arriving will be Li multiplied by area multiplied by dot n L or Li area multiplied by cos theta and the theta is the angle between light and the normal of the surface which gives us BRDF is equals to quantity of light reflected by Li multiplied by area multiplied by cos theta which can also be represented as LO Li dwi cos theta where lo is the direction of light outgoing that means the direction of light reflected 
and here dwi is the area of the differential solid angle. So in many mathematical papers, this equation of BRDF is represented like this. So you don't have to be scared of these mathematical symbols, you just have to understand what is going on. And now we understand what is the meaning of this equation. And the value of BRDF is not bound between 0 and 1 as it is bound for diffuse reflections. Now let's understand the classes of BRDF. BRDF is classified under two classes. One is isotropic, another is anisotropic. Isotropic means uniformity in all directions. An isotropic reflectance is the reflectance that does not change based on the orientation or the rotation of the surface. So if this is the surface and the reflectance does not change by the rotation of the surface, then this reflectance is isotropic reflectance. And the BRDF that represents the isotropic reflectance is the isotropic BRDF. So it all comes upon the type of material it is. If the material exhibits isotropic reflectance, then this material is isotropic material. And similarly, if the reflectance changes based on the orientation or the rotation of the surface, then it's called as anisotropic reflectance. And the materials that exhibit anisotropic reflectance are called as anisotropic materials. And here is an example of anisotropic material. And you can see the reflectance is changing based on the rotation of this material. Now let's come to the mathematical representation of BRDF. At this point, we know that BRDF is a function of incoming light direction and outgoing light direction. So BRDF is a function that takes incoming light direction and outgoing light direction. That means BRDF is a function of vector L and vector V. As we know that this direction will be the direction of light to the point of the surface and this direction will be the direction of the camera or the eye because that is where we will be rendering our scene from. So whatever light comes onto the surface and then goes to the camera and these are the directions we need to calculate the BRDF. In the shaders, we will use these vectors to define the BRDF. But to define BRDF mathematically, these vectors will be represented in spherical coordinates. So this is the vector. In the shader, we will define them as X, Y, and Z, which is the Cartesian coordinate. But in mathematics, they are represented in spherical coordinate and they will be represented by theta and phi. And now let's take a look at what is spherical coordinate and how we will represent our x, y, z as theta and phi.